So the next drink that we're going to be working on here is called Ass of Myself because number one is based off of a Kentucky mule recipe that I know and number two if you have a few of these uh, well you might make an ass of yourself. So be careful. Now this is going to be a rye based drink so we're going to be using uh, two and a half ounces of this. As I mentioned before we've got the nice wiggle rye that's uh, nice local from Pennsylvania. We're also going to be working with the uh, spicy turmeric syrup, the ginger glycerite, and the fire cider tincture which is really nice. So this is based off of apple cider that's, that's uh, got our base but we've also got rosemary, raw honey, ginger, um, onions, garlic. This is a uh, horseradish you know this is, this is going to clear your nostrils all on its own but it's also going to pair really nicely with the flavors that we've got going on here. So this is going to be a shake and drink. So we're going to be using our tin shaker and this is going to start off with some muddling. Now I think that these pair, these flavors all pair very well with apple. And so while we were at the local farmer's market, we picked up some apple. And so I'm going to cut a few slices here and then I'm just going to drop them in. I'm not going to worry about squeezing or chopping them up too much. We're going to be muddling that in just a second. And so then I'm going to put in a couple of lime slices as well. Again, just slicing off the ends like that then cutting in half like so and then making your wedges from there. And these limes are seedless but if you have seeded lemons or limes for any of the fruit that you're cutting just another elevated thing that you can do is take out the seeds. Yeah nobody likes seeds in their teeth so I'm going to put that in there, put that in there. Don't need to squeeze because we are muddling and here we go. So I'm just crushing up those apples I mean I'm basically doing a, uh, my own homemade cold press here. I'm not going to, I mean just uh, unpasteurized apple cider is at the end of the day you just take the apples and you crush them up and you press them until you get the juice. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here with the limes to get that essence. But that's not all. So we've got our solids in the small part of the shaker and we're going to put our liquids in the large part. So we're going to start off with this spicy turmeric which I'm going to use half an ounce of. You don't want too too much but you do want to have that spice and turmeric is very very good for you. Helps with inflammation. All right so we've got that and we've got the fire cider which is going to have a nice little tincture as you can see here and you're going to do like four to six of those. There we go. All those wonderful flavors of botanicals to work with and last the ginger glycerite. So a traditional Kentucky mule is usually bourbon. I'm going to use about one full tincture of this, so two little droppers there. It's traditionally bourbon and lime and ginger beer. That's what's going to go in a Kentucky mule. So you can see how we're working with similar flavors here. So we've got the syrup, the glycerite, and the tincture in there. The last thing I'm going to add is the rye. And here's why. From a bartender's perspective, all right. If you're behind a bar, the most expensive ingredient that you're adding to a drink, if you're at a craft cocktail bar, is going to be the alcohol. And if you mess up that drink up until you add the alcohol, you can dump that all out and start anew, and you haven't wasted any product. And that's why I've kind of conditioned myself to adding the alcohol last. So we're going to add two and a half ounces, remembering that most crafted cocktails will have uh, between two and three ounces of base liquor. But because of the nature of this particular drink, which has um, you know, a decent amount of sugar and a lot of flavors in it, it you uh, really can't taste the alcohol too, too much. So you really don't want to go ahead. Don't be like, oh, I don't taste the alcohol. I'm going to just dump a bunch more in. Be careful, folks. <laughs> Might end up on the floor. So last thing to add, the ice. As we talked about before, you always want to add the ice last because you don't want to worry about that dilution up front too quick. But what should I do first? I should ice the glass. You don't want to use the ice that's in the shaker. Again, that's going to be all small and diluted. It's going to melt too quick. And so I'm going to put that right there. That's what I'm going to serve it in. And now I'm going to put all this other ice into the small half of the shaker. And now it's time for that flare. Time to practice our flare, folks. I think that'll do it. And so if this gets stuck, you'll notice that I'm kind of tapping the side here and holding it to my chest. 
because uh, ice expands and this is copper plated so this will kind of get kind of tight as it gets cold might need to wiggle it out there we are now this has a lot of stuff in it the more stuff that you're putting in a drink the more viscous material that you have from your solids your fruit uh, the apples I have in here that's all gonna be floating around so I'm gonna give it the old double strain there we are But because I'm topping this off with ginger beer, again, we're going to want to leave a little bit of room at the top there. Ah, what's that old trick to open those ginger beer bottles? There we go. Or you could use a traditional wine key if you have it on hand. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be using the Fever Tree ginger beer. The best kind of ginger beer is unfiltered. So if you see the sediment in there, that's the best kind that you can have. I mean, if you can only get ginger ale, that's okay. But ginger beer has a nice essence to it that is a nice little spiciness. And we're going to give this just a few revolutions in the glass. There we go to mix that in. And the last thing that we need now is a garnish. And so I'm going to reach in here, find myself a fresh lime, and we're going to make a lime wheel for this, which I'd showed you previously one of our other drinks will use a lime wheel so that's what that looks like but if you score it on the side from the middle out like this now you can set this right on the glass and because I've got apple in this drink I think a nice apple slice is perfectly appropriate and you can play around with how you score these so I'm going to score this kind of from top to bottom in a long way that lets it kind of set off the edge of the glass like this there we are and so ladies and gentlemen this is the ass of myself <laughs>